In this film, we're looking at setting up Photoshop, uh, especially if you're using it for the first time, getting going. It can be a little bit frustrating where you're not maximizing how things work together. So the first thing I would say is when we're looking at Photoshop is to make sure that you keep all of your apps, as it were, up to date uh, if you're working on the CC Cloud and things really. And you can just see kind of uh, if, if you scroll, you scroll down here, what you've got available to you. Uh, both in your subscription and obviously what is already downloaded and what you're using. So make sure that all these are up to date anyway. Uh, this gives you also an opportunity to actually kind of uh, try before you buy as well if you're looking at other things. Uh, but the main thing for, for this kind of session, it's about making sure that you're up, uh, you're up to date. Next thing would be is you would think actually delving into Photoshop itself, but I would prefer you to look at how you're going to work uh, across the actual platform. And I would recommend that you download the free free bridge app. Uh, and this will allow you to kind of work across all the different kind of Adobe programs as well, la launching into different things uh, as well. Lightroom very very similar, but Bridge is saying basically what it is. It's it's a bridge to other programs. Uh, plus plus from within here, of course, we can actually take things into RAW as well. So uh, as far as the Bridge window is concerned, one of the great things about it, you can have multiple windows running at the same time. So uh, to do that, I can physically just go to File New. That duplicates the window that I'm in. I can open up another window at the same time. I can just drag it and shape it and size 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 it so in fact I, I can have multiple uh, bridge windows run at the same time I can even take it off screen to another screen as it were so um, as far as uh, this layout is concerned I tend to actually work in essentials mode the majority of the time uh, if I'm working in viewings I work in film film strip mode but that's a different film so as far as the essentials are concerned, if I'm working with a raw file, um, as soon as I basically go to click on the image itself, so double click in it, it basically then will go through the ACR, which is the Adobe Camera Raw window. Uh, in the same way in Lightroom, you'd be processing that photograph in some way before doing anything. And as a rule of thumb though, instead of just clicking an image to bring it into Photoshop, we would be saving this photograph through uh, Bridge just by kind of clicking on the top here for the save options and then opening up the save ver version. But I can open this directly into Photoshop. Uh, and obviously once I click on the open, if I've done some adjustments in the bridge and camera raw, then obviously those would be applied to the image. Um, as far as uh, when now that we're in Photoshop, we're not going to look at uh, using an image first. In fact, the main thing that you, you should be doing is coming down into edit and then into your preferences and kind of just clicking into general and working your way through these. One of the main things is going to be is to do with the uh, performance. And you want to make sure that by default, it comes in around about 60% where possible, bring it up to about 80, 85% to really use whatever kind of RAM is available on your machine. And then the next thing is uh, looking at the history states. M majority of the time, you're going to keep the history states to 20, uh, and that is going to allow you kind of 20 backward steps. If you find you're not using many history states, possibly about five or 10, then basically uh, just set this itself to another number, and that will obviously kind of free up some more kind of processing. Scratch disks, absolutely essential uh, to make sure that you're choosing what is in your machine or what is available to your machine. This doesn't have to be just internal, but it can be externals as well. And um, obviously, if you just want to uh, select onto a different drive, uh, in this case, I don't want, I don't want to, but if, if I did, I could push it upward and this would be the main uh, active scratch disk uh, away from the actual hard drive, C drive itself, which obviously, if that's the only one in the machine, it's going to slow things down a little bit. If it's the only one available, hey, oh, that's the way it goes. Um, but if possible, have some other drives available, either in, inbuilt um, or obviously run external ones, but make sure they're fast drives like SSDs. Cursors, I would encourage you to uh, go in there straight away and click on full size brush tip. 
Yep, and I would also encourage you to uh, click on precise. Um, that means that uh, you know exactly what you're trying to, uh, um, uh, what, what what you will see actually during the processing as far as the painting activities, cloning activities, and so on with it. Other things to actually do with here, obviously, depends on where you are, what you prefer to work in, whether it's it's centimeters or, red, or inches, but we can set this up within Photoshop itself uh, without any other trouble. So once we've done that, let's just press OK, and that would actually take uh, um, use of the new set settings. However, I would encourage you to um, shut Photoshop down, and then restart Photoshop just to make sure it is in its memory. Next for me, um, I would want to actually make sure that I'm setting up the workplace to kind of work in the way that I want it to, not the way that Photoshop thinks I want, I want it to. And uh, you can see different kind of workspaces. If you just click up in the top right-hand cor corner, which looks like a little bit of a page, uh, and then you can see here we've got uh, things like Essentials, 3D Graphics, Motion Painting, Photography. Obviously, I'm in the world of photography, so as a rule of thumb, we're going to click onto that, and it kind of just gives us a different layout fully. And you can bring these back at any stage, but you can also so see in here in fact is that I can set things up just as I want I want them to so if I didn't want things like navigate uh, navigator I can shut those down I don't need to be seeing them at all I'm not saying that you should be doing this all right but uh, at least you can change it and then you just go in and basically uh, save save yourself a new work workspace which you can then recall at any stage so uh, all you want to do once you've kind of got familiar with the layout then you want to click on new workspace and then you're pretty much ready to go. If you've kind of done some things to the workspace like I just did, but you don't want to actually make them permanent, then you don't have to worry about it. All I need to do is kind of click on Reset Mark C Workspace, and then basically it will reset itself no matter what. So you can be pretty much uh, uh, secure in kind of playing around where the windows are going to go and how they're all going to kind of uh, fit within the genre of the way that you work. Uh, remember at any stage, in fact, if you're using multiple screens, we can drag these off to another screen, even though you can't see it now, it is running on my secondary screen, and obviously I can kind of bring it back at any stage as well. So um, as you just saw there, as far as the layout was concerned, all, all I did was grab onto the layers tag, and then basically I moved it into uh, like I've done here, I've moved it into the kind of panel, or I can grab it and move it out of the panel. You've, uh, you can see here when it highlights to blue, it means it's going to dock itself back in here. And you can also actually reposition them in the kind of the layout exactly where you want them to go. So for instance, if you find yourself with history and layers are going to be your main two, you could actually just kind of click onto here. On, on the other hand, perhaps in the history, you don't need, need to be seeing, but you want it instantly as a kind of a click on grab i could actually drag it down into the kind of these uh, diff uh, different kind of layout panels which will expand or collapse as i kind of click onto it so when i click onto here it opens up when i uh, click on it again it collapses back down Another thing that I like to do is to make sure that um, I'm working with the rulers set here. Uh, and this is a, a great way for me to just kind of go and grab a guide um, at any stage and to switch the rule, uh, rulers on. You're just going up into either uh, the likes of your window panel, your help panel, the view is going to give you all the main things that you need to actually see. So in this case, for rules, you can see here rulers if i click them off they're now gone uh, if we just click onto view again and click the rulers back on again they come back on screen if i want to change this from inches centimeters whatever it would be just double click on to it it opens up the preferences as you can see here um, it's in centimeters already but if i want to switch that into inches just clicking onto that it will kind of update itself in the same way here, when we're looking at the Snap 2, I encourage you to have that on. And then re really what I want to do is actually snap to the guides or snap to layers or snap to the document bounds. This is going to allow things to work quickly when you're uh, dragging and dropping different images in or sections of photograph or if you're doing layouts within documents themselves. Probably um, you're going to be looking at the Windows kind of drop down here more than 
uh, ever because you're going to be deciding on about what things you want visible and what things you don't. So obviously by kind of just clicking onto layers, it comes up. But in the same way, it's also worth to note there are shortcuts here like the F7 key, F8 key, which will actually launch things. But you can obviously override these at any stage by kind of um, setting up your own. And that might be linked into the likes of Actions. As far as help is concerned, this is where you're going to go in to manage your account, kind of get some Photoshop tutorials, uh, things about plugins, which are kind of third party ones that you, uh, you can install. Plus, you can obviously click into the updates as well with it. Right. So as far as the kind of the basic uh, window and the layout is, is is concerned, that's where where we're at. Let's just kind of go quickly back into Bridge. Um, remember, I was saying to you to launch a raw file, I can take it through the ACR. So um, if we're looking at all of the uh, left hand column here for a minute, you can see that I've got basically different kind of panels. So if I wanted this ballerina raw to be in my favorites, I can just drag it in and just actually position it wherever I want it to do. If I hold, I hold it and we've got a double blue line, that double blue line means the folder will be placed within the folder. However, if it's a solid thick blue line, that's where it's actually adding itself to the favorites kind of drop down to you. And in the same way, if I wanna get rid of this, yes, um, all I need to do is right click it and I just go to remove from fav favorites and then basically it's gone again. The interesting thing would be is the way that you're working with images. Uh, we're pretty much used to star rate, rating favorite photographs and uh, uh, Bridge allows you to do that here to go from one star, two star, three star, etc. Et just by using the numeric on the keypad. If you want to see images bigger at the bottom of the keyboard here, you've basically got a, a slider that you can actually kind of slide in and out. And then go back over to the left hand side, you can see here if I just click onto the three stars as well, then basically this brings other things that are uh, available. If I uncheck the five star, then it hides those as well. OK, so uh, as far as the way that we're working with images, if I wanted to increase this one to a five star or four four star, I can just actually either click onto the actual stars themselves or I could press the numeric. So. Um, think about how you want to use um, images. So when things are JPEGs, PSD, TIFFs, um, they'll basically open up as default into Photoshop. So if you just double click into the likes of a PSD file, this opens up and this now reveals all of the elements because it's a PSD, that's a Photoshop document and it's basically a non-flattened document TIFFs can work in a very, very similar way. They are a very, very file hungry size uh, file. So in other words, it's remembering all the different elements compared to when we crush it all back down to the likes of a J JPEG that throws away all the information and basically you're not left with um, any other kind of um, uh, uh, layers to adjust there and so on. The difference being, of course, if you've got uh, things in here that you've made mistakes with, uh, basically you'll, you'll want to actually uh, kind of have the ability to go back in and out to try, uh, kind of make your corrections and so on. When we're looking at the layers palette on the right hand side, um, I definitely would get familiar with layers uh, because when you're working with Photoshop, you want the ability to be able to do fine corrections. And what we're seeing here are lots of different types of layers within the layer palette. They all belong to this document. The bottom document here, as you can see, is called background. That's by default when you open up an image, any image. Let's go back into uh, Bridge and we'll just launch the original JPEG file. So even when I bring that image in, you can see by default it goes to background. That's what it's called, all right? So you haven't lost a, a file name. The file name is up here at the top. If you want to uh, do a side, side by side of two different kind of uh, images, you could kind of drag them away from each other. Um, basically, just have the two available, shrinking down the sizes, and basically um, just deciding on the kind of the layout. Remember, at any stage, I can redock this across towards the side or move it over to another secondary screen. 
let me just close that third document down. That was the one we opened in the first place. Um, but another way to do side by side is going up into the windows and in the range. And this is where you can actually do a, the different uh, the different kind of um, elements um, to uh, shrink, move, create. Uh, and and it, again, it allows you to kind of copy little ele elements across, see what the original was like. Um, but you've got lots of different kind of ways or uh, to view the kind of the different layouts. Obviously, um, stacked or four up or six up and so on. This is just the way we're viewing the actual documents themselves. Finally, on getting started with it, you definitely want the tools palette. Uh, this is this uh, kind of... Um, big long strip this is where you can find all your tools uh, you can dock and undock this at any stage you can change it into what we refer as the classic kind of mode which is the condensed one or in the long strip and at any stage we can kind of either close this down if we did close it down by mistake again back into windows and go into tools and basically the tool presets will kind of uh, be a, a different thing, all right? But tools is what we actually want to bring live again. And all you've got to do is remember, if you want to reset your workspace at any stage, just click on to the basic one or the one that you've made up and you'll be able to reset your document. Last but no means least, when you're saving files, if you definitely want to have all of these layers avail available here, you'll need to either save it as a J uh, uh, sorry as a TIFF file or more commonly a PSD file, a Photoshop document. By doing that, that basically uh, makes sure that we can go back to any of these layers at any stage. So in other words, if I go to File and I go to Save here, Save As, I've got an option now to actually change them into different things. If I was to change it into a JPEG, okay, um, and then what this would do is actually save it as a different file. At this point, because we've got all the layers here, it won't basically close this file down and you lose all the information. It'll only do that if you flattened the uh, file to begin with. But as here, if we just call it Angel 3 for a minute, we just go save. We, we're going to save it as a JPEG. That's okay. That is done. But look, the PSD of the document still exists. So if you do want to have a, uh, a multi-layered document and a flattened image, then basically you've got that ability to save it following. So um, one of the things um, that you need to make sure is setting up those preferences. There's preferences in the likes of Camera Raw as well. Um, but uh, one of the great things about uh, using Bridge and Photoshop together, it's a very, very fast work workflow for you to adapt in the way that your future of using Photoshop, it's about working wise and working smart, and working fast rather than not having any kind of plan of what you're doing. So have something where you can see your images. When you found the image that you want to work with, decide on how you're going to make the first adjustments, whether it's going to be from the raw file, uh, going through the kind of the, wind, uh, the window, as we were saying. So just uh, clicking onto a camera raw image for a se second, then actually just bringing it into the likes of camera raw. We do that by file open with or opening camera raw. When you go into the camera raw window, this is where you'll find you'll be making all your basic adjustments um, in whatever kind of suits your kind of stylization. I would leave all the soft softening to the likes of when you finished in the likes of Photoshop. So I wouldn't go in and actually work on any of the details on the skin or the eyes here, not unless you needed a quick fix. If we did need to do a quick fix here with an image, um, if you want to soften that skin a little bit, use texture first before clarity. Uh, the reason being is that uh, clarity tends to uh, kind of give a glow across the whole thing uh, and lose all all the information rather than the texture just uh, looking at the mid at the midtone sharp sharpness and and just going from there. Once we've made all the basic adjustments, there are things that we can be doing in here that will save time later on in the likes of Photoshop, the likes of the adjustment brush. If we just go in and we wipe across the eye for instance uh, i'll just give an exaggerated effect you can see what i've just done there but you can kind of control things here so step by step bridge then camera raw then into photoshop making 
sure that Photoshop is set up correct, uh, correctly. Try and avoid doing anything drastic in the likes of Camera Raw first. Just do the basic kind of finish. And then obviously within the likes of the true Photoshop window, if you need to do special effects or big fi fixes, then do it here. Hope you enjoy the film. See you next time.